Hey guys, YouTube World 100 here. Alright, now here I am with another Halloween movie review. With the review for Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Um, gosh, then. So, um, yeah. This one sucked too. This sucked just like Halloween 5 did. I mean, this film was just really, really bad. I mean,. Really, this is what they decide to do. I mean, especially with getting to the wrinkles. What were they thinking at this time? I mean, seriously, Halloween Five really didn't like have any follow up with how Halloween Four ended, and really with this movie, it just seems like they like like just decided to do something like completely different, not really related much to Halloween Five at all. And I just really don't know what they were trying to do because yeah this just turned out being just really bad and just, it was just a really bad story not really good development of the characters and really just the story for this just seemed like yeah this just seemed like what in the world did this come from i mean this is kind of like a I, I really don't know how to say but yeah this is like kind of a um psychological story be going into this film about like some demons or something like where did this come from i mean the other films really were just well aside from three but yeah the michael myers movies i mean they just like were just like end up like being a total like slasher what it's like just the slasher genre and here this just seems like it was all psychological stuff going on because yeah in this film it's shown that um that there's like this um these spirit things which is like some kind of ancient curse or something like where did this come from like there was not really nothing of this at all in any of the previous films at all like some kind of like ancient curse and all this psychological stuff going on like where did this come from yeah this just seemed like totally like random and out of nowhere like where, like I just really don't know like what they were trying to do with this, but really what just this film, the story for this just it's like really, really stupid and stuff. I mean, yeah, it's just like a completely retarded story for this and it just really just really is yeah, it just really doesn't make sense and yeah, just yeah, the characters in this are just like really, really bad and you now Michael Myers motivation in this movie, it's just like completely weak to be honest. It's not really like what happened in the previous two films like Jamie's not really his main target in this film well yeah in like early on in this film like he kills Jamie but yeah it just seems like Michael Myers is just like trying to really like get his hints on Jamie's baby and stuff and it's just like really really dumb it just really does not like really make sense because yeah he just like goes around like killing like just random people and stuff and it just really I just really don't understand why he killed a lot of the people that he does in this film. And really just, it's, it just seems like Michael Myers murders in this film, they just seem like really repetitive. Like he just like keeps killing people like the exact same way. So yeah, I'll talk about that later in, in this review later on, yeah. So yeah, but yeah, this movie, it just really is dumb. I mean, it really like doesn't like, uh, in this film, like, you do have a Donald Pleasant returning once again as Dr. Loomis in his final film. Yeah, this is, like, Donald Pleasant's final film, and also, of course, like, the final film that features Dr. Loomis, yeah, because yeah, Donald Pleasant had actually died earlier in the year that this film was released. So, yeah, and even, like, where this movie actually does cut to credits, it does say, in memory of Donald Pleasant. So, yeah, I guess they gave Donald Pleasant some dedication with this film, yeah. Yeah, in this film, you also have uh, Tommy Doyle, who was the boy that Lori babysat in the first film. He's back in this film, and he's played by Paul Rudd in, like, Paul Rudd's first movie. So, yeah, I felt it was kind of interesting that they had uh, Tommy Doyle back in this film, yeah. And, like I said, you do have uh, Jamie also back in this film, though, yeah, she's only, like, in the first 20 minutes of the film, and she's also played by a different actress in this film. Um, but yeah, I really felt that they could have brought back Daniel Harris because, yeah, this movie is set like six years after the events of Halloween 5, and even like this film was released six years after, so I felt that Daniel Harris could have been like the same age that Jamie is in this film. They could have brought her back, but for some reason they cast a different actress to play Jamie, though she's only in the beginning of this film. 
Yeah. Like I said, in this film, uh, Jamie, at the beginning, Jamie ends up giving birth to a baby boy. And then, you know, like, she's trying to run from Michael Myers, and he eventually does, like, find, catch and kill her. So, yeah. So, Jamie really is not in this film very much. So, yeah. So much for, like, continuing the events of the previous two films and you know, just like killing off Jamie so quickly and not really making any more of the story between Michael and Jamie so yeah and this film you also like have uh have like some members of the um Strome family that are living in Michael Myers old house they're like some sort of relatives of Lori. I mean, it's not ever actually revealed, like, what their relations are to Lori, but, yeah, and, yeah, you have, like, some members of the Stroke family that are, like, pretty dysfunctional. There's, uh, like, the main Stroke in this movie, Kara, along with her son, Danny, and, yeah, it's, like, her other family as well, like, uh, her brother and her mother and her father, and the father, He's just a straight-up asshole in this movie, and I hate the father in here. Like, he's just, like, so, like, abusive and just a, an asshole for absolutely no reason at all. Like, in this, there's a point where he actually does, like, smack Kara in the face at one point, making her nosebleed, and I just hate him. And then, yeah, he's, like, a complete asshole to his wife and the entire family. Yeah, I hate the father in this. But was... um, yeah. So, yeah, but yeah, th this is really like your cast of characters in this film, yeah, and I, like I said, I thought it was like kind of interesting that they decided to bring back Tommy, I mean, yeah, I'm not sure like whose decision that was, but yeah, it was kind of a, an interesting decision to do that, I mean, just seeing how Tommy really was not a, really a main character in the, the first film, like he was just kind of a supporting character working along with the uh, Lori. So, yeah, I'm not sure, like, why they decided to bring him back, but, yeah, okay, whatever. Yeah, and like I said, Michael Myers in this film, like, it just seems like, don't, I just really don't know, like, why he does kill, like, some of these people, and why he's really after, uh, Jamie's baby. Yeah, and like I said, the murders in this film from Michael Myers, they just seem, like, so repetitive. Like, there's, like, several different occasions in this film where he just, like, he ends up impaling people, like, he just, like, pierces their bodies, bodies, or, you know, their heads, or anything, yeah, he just, like, does, like, several impalements in this film, and I just, yeah, it gets, like, really tiring just seeing, like, him doing the same style kills over and over again in the film, and even though, like, there are, like, once again, just like in Halloween 5, the deaths in this film, they are still, like, pretty violent, but still, like, just, like, with the seeing the impalements over and over again it just gets kind of stale and even like when we do get like a different kill other than the um the impalements they just really just yeah there's not really like it just really doesn't do a whole lot like there's one time like there's one point in the film where he does like kill like the mother in this film well yeah he kills kara's mother and yeah just like we don't actually see him doing anything, we just see, like, the blood splatter everywhere, so, yeah, we don't even get to see one of the deaths actually on screen. Mm. So, so, yeah, it's just, like, completely all over the place, and, yeah, we do have, like, the stuff with this, uh, Druid cult and stuff, and, yeah, it's just really stupid, and, yeah, it's just, like, diving into some psychology with, like, uh, Michael being afflicted with a curse, which is, like, why he is the kind of person that he is and why he does actually kill people and stuff yeah it just really is like pretty pretty stupid so yeah this really is just like a pretty stupid film and yeah it's just like really not very good at all yeah i really don't know whether or not the fifth or this movie is worse because both are like pretty pretty bad so yeah i really don't know i just give this film like one star out of four once again yeah i may even be generous one star, I could probably even give it less than that, but yeah, I'm just going to go with uh, one star out of four once again. Alright, so yeah, this is just a really stupid movie, so I don't really want to talk too much about it, so yeah, I'm probably just going to skim right through the plot pretty quickly, because yeah, it's just a real dumb movie, and I really don't have a lot to say about it.
All right, but yeah, let me just talk about the plot. All right, so as the film opens, it, like I said, it opens six years after the events of Halloween 5. And yeah, showing that Jamie does end up giving birth to a baby boy. But the baby ends up being taken away by that a mysterious man in black that appeared at the end of the previous film. And it's shown, it's shown in this movie that the that man in black is like leading a druid-like cult. And then eventually Jamie is able to escape from the hospital with the help of a midwife. And then, yeah, she's able to escape with her baby. But the midwife ends up being killed by Michael after he ends up like impaling the back of her head with a metal spike that's on the wall yeah, and i should also say that yeah there's just like really no build-up to the appearance michael myers first appearance in this film like in the other films like before this you had like the build-up of him actually appearing and finally uh, uh killing people but here it's just like he just shows up like out of nowhere without any build-up and he just ends up like starting to kill and the mic and the music in this film like the Michael Myers theme the dun 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 yeah they like ended up like changing the beat for it in this film it's like it's more of like a kind of like a rock style tune now and I just really don't like that I mean it just sounds really stupid I mean the previous one like the John Carpenter version that is like that, it sounds great like that but yeah in this film it just sounds like really retarded honestly yeah yeah Anyway, yeah, Jamie was able to escape from the hospital with her baby, and yeah, she ended up, like, hijacking a, a pickup truck uh, to run for Michael, and uh, he just ended up uh, chasing her down, and at one point, then Jamie then, like, ended up, like, stopping at, like, a deserted bus station, and then, like, she made a call through a radio to Haddonfield and just was warning the town about Michael Myers returning, and then... And then eventually, then, and um, Michael then eventually like was chasing down Jamie some more, and then it caused her to crash into like an old barn, and then eventually Michael ended up catching and killing Jamie, and he impaled her as well with a on a corn thresher, <laughs> and then, and yeah, he like then ended up just disemboweling Jamie. Me and but yeah, on Jamie's a dying words, she just told Michael that he couldn't have the baby. Maybe and yeah, I told the baby was not in the trunk. And yeah, Doctor Loomis, who is was now retired, as he was paying a visit to his friend at Terrence Wynn, they actually did a uh, hear hear uh Jamie's uh, radio call. And yeah, I should also say that uh Doctor Wynn, he's like a the chief administrator of the sanitarium in Smith's Grove, oh, where, of course, like, Michael was incarcerated, which is where he escaped from in the first movie, yeah. Yeah. And then, and yeah, eventually, like, it showed that in Haddonfield, Tommy was now living in a boarding house run by this uh, elderly woman, Mrs. Blankenship, and it also showed that there was the this the dysfunctional stroke family living across the street in Michael Myers' old home. And like I said, it's not really like ever revealed what their actual relations are to Jamie. It's not revealed if like if Kara is the Jamie's sister, if she's her cousin. Yeah, it's not really made clear like what this family's relation to Lori actually are, but yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's like shown that uh, Tommy, ever since what happened in the first movie, he was just like now like obsessing over um, finding out really the truth behind Michael Myers' motives. And eventually, when he is at a bus station, he actually ends up finding uh, Jamie's baby and decides to take him into his care. And as he was like trying to bring the baby into a hospital, Tommy actually did run into Doctor Loomis, and then. Uh, he was telling Dr. Loomis about the stroke family that was living in the house now, and they, both Tommy and Dr. Loomis, really did believe that Michael had returned to Haddonfield. Yeah. And then, yeah, Tommy then decided to name the baby Stephen. Yeah. And yeah, eventually then Michael then, like, arrived back at his home, and yeah, Dr. Loomis was trying to warn the, the Kara's mother, Deborah, 
about Michael Myers, and he was, like, wanting to get the kids out of there, but, yeah, then, like, Michael Myers was there, and then he ended up killing Deborah, and, yeah, he, this was the death I was talking about, where, yeah, he just ended up, like, killing her, like, I think by hitting her over the head with an axe or something, and, yeah, it didn't actually show him hitting her, it just, like, cut away, and just showed the blood splattering, so, yeah, and, yeah, Tommy then eventually brought Kara and Danny, the Kara and her son Danny, to her, uh, the boarding house, and then, yeah, Tommy was just revealing to, um, Kara and, and Danny that he really does feel that Michael Myers was inflicted with this ancient curse known as Thorn. Thorn, and, yeah, it's, like, explained that, like, there was a child from each tribe a long time ago that was chosen to, like, bear the curse of Thorn, and they need to sacrifice the next of the kin on the night of Samhain or Halloween and you now Tommy just like felt that Stephen would actually be the final sacrifice of Michael Myers and yeah that's how they went out to look for Dr. Loomis then like Mrs. Blankenship was talking to um uh Danny and Kara and yeah she actually told them that she was babysitting Michael Myers that night he ended up killing his sister which was the scene shown at the beginning of the first movie and, yeah, Danny was actually, like, hearing a voice in his head really telling him to kill, like, Michael well, did, and which is why he kills. Yeah. Which is, like, saying that Danny is possessed by the power of the form. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, Michael eventually, like, ended up killing, like, the father and, and uh, uh, Kara's brother, Tim, and his girlfriend, Beth, and, yeah, the killing up a father, it was actually, like, pretty, like, brutal, I mean, yeah, once again, it was, like, another impalement, but it was also, like, he pierced him, and also, like, pierced, like, an electrical cord or something, something, yeah, or then, and, yeah, it just ended up, like, electrocuting of the father, and it just, like, ended up, like, exploding his head, literally, so, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of a brutal death there, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, like I said, Michael Myers then just killed, like, a few other people, and then eventually, like, Tommy and Dr. Loomis found each other, and then they returned back home, and then it was shown that that man in black was actually Dr. Wynn, and it was shown that Mrs. Blankenship was a member of his cult. And then, like, yeah, they just ended up, like, taking Kara, Danny, Stephen, as well as Michael Myers to Smith's Grove, and for some reason they didn't take Dr. Loomis and Tommy, too, but, yeah. Yeah, they eventually, like, went back to the Smith's Grove Sanitarium where they were taken, and, yeah, Dr. Lewis was, like, just confronting Dr. Wynn, and then, yeah, Dr. Wynn just revealed that he wanted to control and study the thorn power, and he wanted Dr. Lewis to join on the conspiracy, and it was revealed that, uh, Stephen was representing a new cycle of Michael Myers' evil that was kept secret. From most of the cult who were like wanting to inflict the curse on to Danny to carry the trend of sacrifices. Yeah, but yeah, eventually then uh Tommy was able to free Kara as well as Danny and Steven and uh then Michael Myers eventually ended up escaping too and then he was just like butchering some a team of staff surgeons and when and, yeah, and, yeah, he was just, like, chasing, uh, Tommy, Kara, and Danny through, like, the sanitarium, and eventually it spilled into the laboratory, and then, yeah, Dr. Loomis then was able to help them escape, but, it, yeah, once, uh, like, he, Tommy came face-to-face -face with Michael, well, he was, like, pretending to give, uh, Michael the baby, and then he, like, ended up, like, injecting Michael Myers with the, some tranquilizers, which also, like, had some sort of, like, corrosive fluid inside them, and then eventually he just ended up, like, beating Michael Myers unconscious with a lead pipe, and then, yeah, they were all then ready to leave, but, yeah, Dr. Loomis just said that he was gonna stay because he has a little business to attend to, and it just showed that, uh, Tommy, you know, Danny, Kara, and Stephen, that all like, driving off, and then, I just showed, like, Dr. Loomis was standing outside of the building, and 
then just showed that it was there was a Michael's mess just seen on the floor in the lab room, and then we just heard like Doctor Loomis screaming, and then like off screen, and then it was just like cut to credits. So yeah, it's never it was never like revealed what actually did happen to either one of them. Like, did Michael Myers kill Doctor Loomis? I don't know. I guess we can assume that since like like I said, this is the last film with Doctor Loomis, and he's never seen again. And yeah, yeah. And, as I said, before it actually you cut the credits, it said in memory of Donald Pleasance. So, yeah, I don't know, like, if, if Donald Pleasance hadn't died, do you think maybe Dr. Loomis would have, like, still continued to be in the series? I mean, yeah, I guess that's up for debate, but, yeah, we'll never actually know the answer. But, yeah, yeah I guess, like, it's just up in the air to decide whether or not uh, uh, Michael Myers actually did kill Dr. Loomis here. Yeah, I guess, like, we can only, like, assume that since it's never actually revealed but yeah like yeah this is like i said this is just like a really a pretty dumb movie i mean some a pretty dumb story and yeah just like like repetitive murders and yeah it's just like a really dumb movie and yeah it's just really not good and it, it is like definitely really really skippable i guess it's not really hard to see why i never actually did see this film before until actually watching it to make this review so yeah i guess like it really wasn't a film i really needed to watch because yeah it just is a really forgettable film and nothing stands out about it so yeah not really recommended like i said one star out of four all right so yeah this is from my review of halloween sex the curse of michael myers hope you guys enjoy what i had to say about this and yeah Hopefully, with the next film, Halloween H2O, it, this will actually be better than the previous two that I have already watched. Because, yeah, if they continue to get this bad, I just don't know what I'm going to do. But, yeah, I know, like, Halloween Resurrection, that's a really pretty bad film, too. But, yeah, hopefully with the next film, H2O, I'll get, like, a much better sequel than I have after watching, like, these previous two films. Because, yeah, H2O is another film that I really haven't actually really seen before. I may have seen, like, some bits and pieces of it, but, yeah, I've never actually watched the full thing before, so, yeah, I've, I have heard that it is one of the better sequels of the original series, so, yeah, I'm just gonna have to see when I watch it. So, yeah, that'll be coming up next, but, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this review, so, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.